Hey there and welcome to this small video about unit tests. So what is a unit test first? Well, it's a software testing technique where individual units or components are tested. The purpose is to verify that these units work as expected in isolation and that's important that it is done in isolation. So it is just the units individually that we test. If we look at this illustration, we can see we have a unit test and then we also have other test techniques. And we also have other uh, test types uh, than uh, is on this illustration here. If we look in the bottom here we can see we got the unit test there and then integration test on top and UI test. Then we could also have beta test and acceptance test and so on and so forth. But if we look at these three test types and unit tests in particular we can see that unit test if we look in the left side is a fast way of doing testing. We can rather quickly create unit tests for some of our classes. Or methods and we can also run them rather fast we can run unit tests automatically in uh, IntelliJ or also in other IDEs and we can generally do unit tests in a, in a lot of different programming languages we can also see that if we go up in the stack we have integration test and UI test and it becomes slower and slower to do these tests here because they require more preparation and also they require a bit more code because if we have to do a UI test we need some sort of UI of course and we need to have a more finished program. But a unit test we basically only need to have classes or components and, uh, and methods so that's really good. On the right side we can see that it is also a cheap way of tests because when we make a new class or before we make a class we can already start there to write the unit tests. And if we develop uh, after the test-driven development approach, then we normally are going to write the unit test before we actually write the classes. And of course, all of them is going to fail initially, but uh, then we can implement the code and test our classes. And again, we can also see when we go higher in the stack integration test, it becomes a little bit more costly because the units have to work together. We have to build more code and user interface test. We, uh, if we experience a bug, if we find a bug in a UI test and it relates to some class or components, it's really expensive because we have to go back in the development process and we have to maybe check the classes, we have to identify the error and we have to do the integration test again maybe. So as higher we get, the more costly it will be. And also if we have a beta test, it's really costly because if we invite 100,000 people to do a beta test and we find an error, and the error is so critical that we, we cannot continue, then we have to go all the way through and uh, do the unit test and integration test. So it's really, really costly up here in the higher test types. But it's cheap to do unit tests, so that's good. We can also see that the size of the figures also tell us something about how many unit tests we should do. So we should normally we should do more unit tests than UI tests. So we can do a lot of Unit test, we can test the classes in a lot of different ways with valid data and invalid data. And then we can have some integration tests, but a little bit fewer than unit tests and even fewer UI tests. So why should we do unit testing? Yeah, uh, we want to make our software program robust, of course. Uh, we don't want to end up having an error like this in our program. So uh, our goal is to make our software robust, that it will work without errors. Another reason is also that testing will force reflection. It will give a clear perception of what to code if we have the tests. It will also improve the design. It will force a good design. It will. We talk a lot about this high cohesion and low coupling. And we can see an example of this in the left side that we have classes or components that have low cohesion and high coupling. So they have a lot of dependencies between them. And when you end up with an application that has this design, it becomes really difficult to do proper testing of it because it, it has many dependencies. So how should we unit test one component because it depends on this component? Then it becomes easier when we have high cohesion and low coupling. So we have much more isolated units and they have fewer dependencies. It becomes much more easy to do unit testing on an application if it is designed like this. So that's also important. And also regression tests. When we fix one bug, we have a tendency to maybe introduce several other bugs. 
And that's annoying, of course, but uh, we need some way to be able to see rather quickly that when we have fixed one bug, that our program is still working. Our application has not uh, suffered from any new bugs. And we can use unit test for that. We can run the unit test again right away after we have modified the program. And then we can see if they fail or they pass. And also, as we talked about previously here, it becomes more and more expensive to correct an error uh, the further we get into the development process. So we should think early tests. And we can already start thinking about tests at the requirement specification. We can test this against the client to see if they really want all these requirements. If it is the correct requirements, we can also test the design, the UML diagrams, before we start to code. So it becomes more and more expensive to correct a bug. So JUnit is a unit testing framework designed for Java. And as we've been talking a little bit about, it tests a simple cohesive piece of software if it works as expected. And a unit test targets a small isolated unit of code uh, that could be a method or a class. If we have any external dependencies, if we have maybe a database or something like that, we have to remove it from the unit tests by replacing this dependency with a test implementation or a mock object. So we can create a mock database object, if that is the case, where we have controlled data, because initially we don't have control of our database. And it is also a dependency, so it is not a unit test if we include the database. Okay, so this is pretty much what I wanted to mention about unit test in this video here. It is a really important test type that is cheap and you can automate. Okay, hope you have fun with this and bye-bye.